Thanks for dropping in. This is the ongoing saga of the 1571. The one that spun and didn't spin and then wouldn't respond, wouldn't react. <sighs> and of course I suspect a 6526R4 chip and I did steal a couple of 6526s out of a Commodore 64, but the drive just spins. Anyway, it's one of those things where, you know, people always say, oh, let's save time. It usually ends up taking three or four times as much time. So, what am I going to do? Well, I have here another 1571 disk drive that I just ran the performance test on. I have done this before, as you see. It says it works, and it does. I have not, I don't believe I've ever tried it in 128 mode yet. Okay. I don't want to mix up the screws. So, once again, I thought, as I said before, I will save time by stealing a chip out of a 64. Didn't save time. Might have worked. Interesting thought. Might have worked. Didn't work. It's funny though because at the last World of Commodore that was actually completely held in person, which I guess was 2019, um, I had a bunch of things there to work on things and test things and tinker. And I didn't have a pet there, but these fellows who were tinkering on a pet came over and said, you got a 6502 chip? And of course, inside the, um, inside of a 1541, I did have such a chip. So, I carefully pried it out and sent them away. Alright, so, another four screws. I'm just undoing the ground screw, which, much like on the other one, I will put back in position. It is its own unique thing. I never thought I would be doing this today. I thought it would be a simpler thing, but mind you, keep in mind, I, I have not done a whole lot of 1571 tinkering over the years. I've done probably more than most, but compared to the 1541, not nearly as much. So, we will get the last screw out of the power supply. Now that of course is another thing, is, well, are there power supply troubles? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, so we have 1571, and I will take the power supply out. So, and I will set it. Go over here. I don't want to mix them up. So in this. 1571, indeed, the same two chips are in sockets. The very same chips. Which leads me to believe that maybe after some experimentation, they found that these chips, if anything, was likely to fail. Maybe it was these, and maybe they should leave them socketed. So that when the drives come back to Commodore or to a service center, it is 
much easier to deal with. This chip is, there we go, putting up a bit of a fight. But it's been in that socket probably never taken out since it was put in. Probably. You never know. People don't just take out sock chips from sockets for it. Boy, it is putting up a fight on the last pins, and I don't want to hurt things. I do not. So I will wiggle with care. Ah, okay, now I certainly do not want to mix up this chip with the other. Let's me glance here at the pins, they look good. Huh. Oh. Hmm, so this is an 8521R Dero. I don't suppose somebody put the wrong chip in the drive. I don't know. I know that they did have some chips that they renamed. For different machines. Now that is curious. There goes the 6526R4. Interesting. Very interesting. So we have the power supply end. This, remember, is the drive that works. What do we have? Turning on the Commodore 64. Do we have anything in here? Alright, well we have... There it goes. We have the test demo. So I'll take out this blank disk. I will press run. <coughs> and it is running. So, this is, of course, a good thing that I try and do is, first of all, only do one thing at a time, or swap, swap one thing at a time. And generally, it's better to put something, to test it into something you know is working, rather than the other way around, because you never know what else is the trouble. It stopped clicking. Oh, okay, it's clicking again. So it is formatting the disk. So at this moment, I am assuming, and this could be a big assumption, that the 8521R0, this one made in the 48th week, 1986, is in fact the same as the 6526R4. So the drive does seem to be working. It seems. And it is doing its thing. That 
implies to me that indeed there could be something else wrong with the other drive. As in, well, I mean, one would like to think the other chip that's in the socket. But this seems to be working quite fine with that chip. Oh, yay, oh, yay. Always exciting. So this is running through the test demo thing. I suppose what I might do in the midst of this is grab... Drive. Oh. Find my little wee screwdriver. And of course, the only other chip that I can really check right now without doing major surgery. a ROM chip. It is putting up not a huge battle, but you know what, there's just, there's not a whole lot of room. There just isn't. And some of these things that were helpful before in getting the other chip out are not helpful. So I'm going on a bit of an angle. Oh, here we go. All right. No. I will not put that down there. All right, so here's the 1571, the original one, that's causing grief. Now both chips have been removed. And this is past the performance test. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So, power's off. Power supply is out. We'll put that over here so as not to mix it up. And then, using our new found skill, And now, with great care, I will line up the pins. Put them in. All right. Uh -huh. I almost grabbed for the wrong power supply. Uh, keep only swapping out. One thing at a time. Right. Power, power, power. So. Alright, so now Swapped. The other chip, we're plugged in. Turn it on. Oh, I was almost tricked there. Okay. We will type run. And we will see. Interesting. So, 
So at first glance, there is something amiss on the circuit board. But there are other parts. I mean, it, the drive is basically made up of the mechanism, the power supply, the circuit board. That's all there is. So, I think next, just to see, I will try swapping out the power supply. I think I shall. I will. And then see if that makes any difference. And chances are it won't. And the other thing I should do is, there we go, we are is actually swap out the drive mechanism. Okay, that's really all there is. It's either the board, the drive mechanism, or the drive. That's all there is. That's all there is. It can't be the case. It can't be. My gut tells me it's something else on the circuit board. But we'll see. I've been wrong before. I have. Sometimes it is something simple. But I've never seen it, a power supply on 1571 go bad. But who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe, you know, earlier on, this one, it it wasn't happy. And then it was, kind of, as in it didn't do the same things after it warmed up. Maybe there's something on the power supply. Maybe. I suspect it's not going to be. But once again, it's kind of like doing an autopsy. Until, unless you look at everything, you don't know what anything might have caused something. So this is running through its tests, doing its thing. And it will probably come up and say, it's, yeah, it's fine, it's dandy, it's working. Isn't it? Oh yeah, breathing. It's scratching. Scratch. Move the head, move the head. Okay, we're all good. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to unplug that. Okay, well, whatever. All right, so this is the power supply that has been tested. And this is the power supply from the original drive that we are testing. Alright, so is this really going to make any difference at all? I don't think so, but we have to try, because then it is always a mystery. Could it have been the power supply? Now, the scary thing about power supplies, especially with the Commodore 64, if you had a bad power supply, if you had a bad power supply that had gone hot and you plugged it into a Commodore 64 that was good, it would kill it. Kill. 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 So, you always got to be careful, thinking, hmm, power supply, do I really want to do that? Anyway, this is the other power supply. It does seem okay so far. Funny, I do find, strangely, maybe the stepper motor is a little louder with this. I don't know. But it does seem to be working. So now, we are getting to where perhaps I will. Is there any other way to do this? I don't know if I can delicately do the drive swap. 
without taking this one out, but maybe I can. I've had things before with 1541s where I broke a nail. I broke a nail. Um, so this goes in this drawer. These are the two original chips from there. Okay, so, um, yeah, I've had 1541s before, or I've had them where I can kind of set them up side by side and get the drive mechan like plug in without having to dismember. I'll see what I can do about that. Anyway, this is, of course, going to pass the performance test. <sighs> so now I just have to figure out. Can I? do this. Oh, look. It's another example of let's save time, which of course undoubtedly will take four times as long. I shall ponder. I'm thinking that if I take this drive, set it up sideways over here, I can reach the cables to it. I think. Anyway, it is scratching, it is reading, it is writing, it is moving the head. And it is fine. All right, I need to ponder how it is that I'm going to accomplish the swapping of the drive mechanism without actually taking this one out, and if that is possible. So, thank you again for coming. Stay tuned to this continuing saga of the 1571 disk drive. Thanks again. Always a pleasure. Bye for now.